Hey guys, uh, just a video on NFT Handshake and how to set up the bot from scratch. Once you get your login and your dashboard, you're just going to log in and then you're going to go straight over to wallets. And in here, you're going to set up your wallets uh, one by one. Or if you only have one, you just select the one. You go in here and you add your name, your seed phrase and your wallet address. Uh, keep in mind that the name should be something that you can remember. I like to keep track of track of the, the name by using the same name as I use in OpenSea. That way it's, it's easy. Seed phrase and the wallet address gets hashed, uh, meaning it's encrypted as soon as you add it in. That way it's impossible to see it in the database. It's impossible to hack. It's completely secure, which is extremely important as well uh, for your own uh, sake as well. Once you've added it in, it will show here. And you can also see there's no way to see the information. There's no way to edit the information. You can only delete it. This is for your own security as well. If somebody accesses the dashboard, they can't do anything with it. Once you add in your wallet, start. Uh, it's time to start scraping. And you want to scrape the collections that you want to bid on. Uh, this is a, an account we've done a lot already uh, for testing purposes. So there's tons in here. You can see that. But uh, just to show you guys, to add in a new collection is super easy. You just click on, uh, on the Create New Collection. And you're going to scrape any URL from OpenSea that you want to scrape. Uh, so it's super easy. Uh, that was really important for us so that, yeah, uh, it's not difficult. If you don't have to merge any files, uh, you don't have to. That's something I, I had to do in the past, just kind of working with a desktop bot that gave me a lot of trouble just uh, making mistakes very easily. Mm -hmm. So if you have any collection, it can be anything at all. You just add it in here. You can add 10 or 20 collections at any time, uh, whatever you like, save them back, and then it will start scraping it. Now it has a queue system. So if anything else is already scraping, then it will say pending in here and it will wait until it's, it's, uh, it's ready to go. But it's always working on the back and you can still scrape. Uh, a bit on tokens while this one is working. And we can see here that it started and it's processing the tokens. First of all, it already understands that there are 10,000 and it's going to scrape them now. It also imports the floor price. And you can see the last time it imported the floor price, which is really useful. It will only take a couple of minutes and then this collection will be ready. After that, it will take rarity. Uh, it will check the rarity status. Uh, basically, we have built in a custom software that will scrape rarity.tools to see if there are any uh, rarity information on that website and then we'll add it into the software here so you can use it for bidding. There are certain uh, things in here you can use, uh, certain features, you can see the asset list, you can check the rarity floor status when it's done and you can rescrape everything as, as well, which is really, really useful. You can delete a collection as well if you don't wanna check it out anymore. So let's say you're, you're ready to start bidding. You go in here and you just set up a bid by clicking add bid. And you're going to find a collection that you want to bid on. And it can really be anything, uh, to be honest. You just click on the collection you want to bid on and then you select your wallet. And then there are two options to bid. You can disable the outbid function, meaning you'll just bid the same amount, a fixed price for every single listing. So if I wanted to do that, I just wanted to bid you know, 0 0.01 on every single listing. That's you would you would in you would take this one and you would just put your price in here and it will bid this amount on every single listing. Uh, after that, you can add in your expiration time. Uh, how long do you want the bid to last? This is in hours, so you could say ten hours. Um, and these functions are not applicable when you're bidding a fixed amount. Basically, you just need to put in your expiration time, right? Um, when you're done with that, you will click on what tokens you want to bid on. Uh, we can see here there are 9,669 tokens. So I'm going to want to bid on every single one of them. And once that's done, then I can proceed to the last step, which is expected sales price. I added in this here because I want you to think about what your selling price is when you're setting up your bids, because it's so easy to set up, you know, hundreds of thousands of bids, and then you make a mistake with your, with your own floor price and your ceiling price or whatever you are bidding on. Maybe you added in the wrong price here, but this forces you to think about 
what you will actually sell it for if you are going to win that token, right? if you're going to win that NFT. So put in a realistic sales price here that you know is going to be possible. Usually that's going to be the floor price of the whole collection. If you're working with rarity, it will be a little bit different. But for now, that's all you need to know. The last bid function, which is my favorite bid, bid function, is to actually not bid a fixed price, but to bid from a range. So be a range of, of whatever you want to put it, 0, 0 0.001 to 0 0.005. It means that if the highest bid currently on any token is within this range, it will outbid that listing and it will outbid that listing with the amount you put in here. So you might say, well, I want to outbid with this amount. So this makes it very flexible and it means that you will actually get the highest bid on the most amount of tokens when you set it up like this, right? So this is a really cool way of bidding. You might have calculated that I can go all the way up to 0 0.005 and still be profitable if I sell it for 0 0.09. So that might be your tactic here. And then it makes sense that you want to bid up to that amount. You might want to start lower because some tokens don't have any bids. Uh, and that's why you're doing a range, right? You could also say, well, I want to bid from 004 to 005. This is a very close range, but you might say, well, if I bid too low, no one is going to accept my bid anyway. So I want to have a pretty tight range, right? That's how I like to do it anyway. So that's my bid step. That's my expiration time. I'm, I'm using my ranges here. And then I have my expected sales price and I can click save and back and we'll start bidding. Now, just for test purposes, let's just launch, you know, test bid range here. Now it's going to ignore this. It's going to ignore this. It's just going to bid this on every single listing just to show you. So we're going to click save and back. And now it's going to start bidding and it's going to take eight hours for it to bid on all the listings. We could speed that up super easily by saying, well, we could use more threats. We could bid on more listings, right? So what I could do here is I could stop it. And I could potentially bid on more uh, listings at the same time. So I can click rebid super fast. And I'm going to say, okay, for the first thread, I'm just going to bid on the first, you know, 3,000 tokens. And I'm going to click save and back. And then I'm going to launch an additional bid here. I'm going to speed things up now. And I'm going to be bidding from token 3,001 to 6,000. And I'm just going to launch this really quickly. Now I've got two threads going at the same time. So now we are down to from eight hours to two hours and 30 minutes. And I'm still missing the last about 3000 tokens. So I can set that up really quickly as well. We're going to do that super quickly. So the last bit, right? This, it was, uh, I think it was about 9,600. Let's just say that. And there we go. I was bidding on the last tokens here. And that's really cool because now we got three threads going. Uh, there's even another one for a test I did here. Uh, and you can see that all the bits are going at the same time. You can also check the, the lock really quickly. You can see the bits are being accepted. Everything is going well. If there is an issue with your bidding, check the locks, see what's going wrong. That's the best way to identify if there's any issue at all, right? One of the biggest issues you run into is that your wallet hit a limit of the 1000x of your balance uh, or it is a hard cap on the bits. So I always recommend having multiple wallets in there. Uh, when you get a login here, we'll have additional features. You will be able to see the name of your wallet for each and every single bit. And um, it's just going to make it a little bit easier to, to start bidding. Now, let's say that your bid is done uh, and the bids have expired. Uh, I'll just pretend that happened to this listing right here. <clears throat> it will say finished here instead. And you can really quickly relaunch that bid again uh, by going in here. It will remember all your settings. And maybe you said, you know what, the floor price has dropped. So I'm going to lower my bid. And I'm just adjusting that. My sales price is also a little bit lower now because of that. And But everything else is the same. So save them back. 
and now it is basically a bidding again and it's it's up and running so this is a really cool feature to quickly launch your bits again and uh, it's just to save time to be honest and make it easier for you so anyway this is how you set up your bot for bidding for the basic functions of uh, bidding on tokens and we'll do another video soon on rarity as well thank you